Gen 6 TLU here at D-Lab. On the bench this morning, we have a nice classic Heathkit DX100 transmitter. It came in here for a general checkout and installation of the push-to-talk circuit. Here we go. Well, here she is, the DX100. Now this transmitter belongs to Pete W8AA. I met him uh, midway between uh, my location in Detroit to pick it up. He acquired it from Bill, WA8CDU, who is a big time Heathkit collector. So we'll pan the front panel here. You can see she's in very nice condition. There is one screw here that looks like it's been sheared off in the past. I'll try to repair that. Everything looks original except for right here. You can see an additional pot has been installed and there's a jack installed. So I'm wondering did somebody actually put in push to talk? We'll find that out after we get it out of the cabinet. Now right, here we are backside. I removed eight sheet metal screws. This is your RF output, obviously AC line in, and an accessory plug, probably for the TR switch. All right, let's try to slide it out of here. Remember, this thing weighs a good 100 pounds, right? So I'm just gonna kind of push it from the back initially. She's moving, it's a good sign. See that uh, copper chassis? Man, this thing is super heavy. I need short wave girl over here to get it out for me. Old grandpa losing his strength. All right, I'm cut. So I had a screw over here on the side that was hanging up. She's a pretty tight fit. But check out that copper chassis. You gotta love that. All right. She's out. Good thing I got this gigantic Rubbermaid cart, man. It really makes things easy. Chassis's out. Let's give this thing a look over. Ah, remember I told you it kind of looked like a Johnson Viking? Look at there. Johnson! So obviously Heathkit did uh, take some of the technology for this build. Got a whole string of crystals here. That must work with the VFO, I'm guessing, for each band. Original filter caps still installed. But down here is that new audio mod, I'm guessing. So we got some resistoroids, the jack, which is a TRS style. So this thing may have pushed to talk. We're going to have to look underneath. And there's the additional pot. So maybe it was some kind of a standalone audio mod that didn't use the typical Heathkit audio. So you had your choice, I'm not sure. Let's flip it upside down, take a look. I got her flipped on its side for the initial bottom side inspection. Looks pretty darn good. Well, she's pretty crammed up in this area. That must be where the audio in is. I do not see any sign of a push to talk relay. So I'm not sure why it has that type of a mic jack, which would give you the illusion that it does have it, but nothing under here looks smoked. She's pretty clean. So I'm going to investigate what it's going to take to put push to talk in it. So a little follow up on this added circuit. This yellow wire here and orange wire take off and go down to the chassis and then they swoop up into the VFO compartment. So I'm guessing that this is some type of a keyer modification. It has nothing to do with the audio. So we're going to move forward on install and push to talk and I'll do a little more research and try to figure out what this is. But if any of you guys know what the additional jack and pot does on the DX100, let me know. Moving forward on the DX100 push to talk installation, right here is the plate switch. The plate switch is a double pole, double throw switch. It grounds one half, which grounds your keying circuit. And the other side turns on 120 volts to the high voltage transformer, plus it gives you the 120 on the rear accessory socket for your TR switch. So my push to talk module is going to sit somewhere in this location. 
and then the switching wiring here will swing up in parallel across the plate switch. So not only can you use push to talk, but you can also use your existing plate switch for monologue operation. My push to talk line is going to have to go through this grommet and chase over here to the new mic input jack. And that's going to be a little bit tricky to install. If we go back here underneath the plate switch, you'll see a little seven pin tube socket. That is a 6AQ5 and it's got the 6.3 volts AC that I need to power my module. So this should be a pretty slick install. I am going to go ahead and use a standoff to mount this board to this panel here inside the transmitter. So we're not relying on double stick tape this time. Well, There is the K1 push to talk module installed in the DX100. This time I used a standoff with a number six screw. I added some rubber pads down here which elevate the board about a quarter inch off the main chassis. Trickiest part is drilling that hole, but this is a good secure installation. Next up I'm going to remove the plate toggle switch from the chassis and that will give me better access to these terminals to solder on the push to talk lines and it will give me access to that filament pin that I need on the 6AQ5 which will go over here to the green wire on the push talk module. So I've got that plate switch raised up and you can see I've got this red wire that spliceomatic into a ground runner that was original. This thing's been replaced. So I'm going to go ahead and get a new ground wire installed that would be a little bit easier to hook up to the plate switch and I'll get that filament line hooked up to the 6AQ5 tube. So I've got one side of the toggle switch ready to solder the wires to. So this black and red actually go to one side of my push to talk module. This is the original ground line and then over here you have this original blue wire and then this blue wire that was the key line. So this one goes to the accessory socket and this one obviously goes into the wire harness to the keying circuit. So as I stated before I'm going to solder it. So I removed these screws from the toggle switch because I don't believe in using screws on toggle switches in these transmitters because due to vibration they'll loosen up and you'll be back in here tightening them up and as you can see it's quite a job to remove this radio from the cabinet so we'll get this side soldered and we'll flip it and get the other side done so there they are all soldered up so the red and black go to one side of the PTT relay now we're going to do the green and white and that just happens to line up with the colors on the other side of the switch coming along very nicely this is my ground connection for the PTT module. If you want to, you could probably swing that up under this screw that goes to the standoff. It'd probably give you an adequate ground, but I prefer to solder it. Switch is all soldered, back installed. Now I have to take this blue wire. It's obviously a little short. I'm going to route him along the wire harness here and up to the new mic jacket that we're going to install. All right, it's time to change out the mic jack itself. You can see it's buried down here in a hole, not very accessible. So if you imagine putting in a four pin mic jack and having to drill that and mount it, it would be a real challenge. So to make it easy, we're going to put in one of these TRS mic jacks. This is a quarter inch headphone style. It will drop right into the existing hole with no drilling required and the wiring will be a piece of cake. Because this guy going, you got these big lugs staring at you. Well, there's the new mic jack installed. Just barely makes it in there, guys. So you don't have a lot of options when it comes to that. So the PTT wire comes out, goes across the wire harness, zings around here, and hits the board. So it's all wired up. I'm going to give it a quick look over, make sure it's safe to operate, and we're going to test it. Ready for the initial test of the DX100 with a K1 module installed. So to be safe, I've removed the five R4 high voltage rectifiers because I don't need high voltage on at this point. I don't know the history of this transmitter. It might need additional work. So I'm not gonna apply 
the high voltage, but you'll still see the switching with the jewel on the front of the radio and I've got a meter set up here that's watching for the TR voltage, which should be 120 AC. Well, since I've removed the 5R4 rectifier tubes, you are not going to see any wattage output. All right. So really all we need to monitor at this point is the light on the transmitter showing that the plate voltage is applied and the meter showing the 120 out for the TR switch. Okay. So if I turn on plate, there's your 120. There's your idiot light that she's in the transmit mode. And that is how this radio was originally configured. I have the microphone plugged in, a little D104, to our mic jack, which will now activate the PTT module. All right, so here we go. Same thing. Got our 120 and got our light. So at this point, the radio worked both ways, the original way or with push to talk. For your reference now, let me cut to the hookup diagram for the PTT module into the DX100 transmitter. As you can see from the diagram, the installation is very basic. You simply hook the relay outputs in parallel to the terminals on the existing plate switch in the transmitter. Whereas in the DX60, we had to actually cut and splice into wires. So this is a much easier install. Probably the most difficult part of the installation would be mounting the circuit board to the chassis with a hard standoff like I showed. Okay, If you don't want to do that, you can simply use some adhesive and glue the board down or you could use double sided tape. Okay, I've done that in the past and it works fine. Alright, another successful K1 PTT module installed this time into the Heathkit DX100 transmitter. Now looking at this and knowing that it just goes across the plate switch reminds me of another transmitter and that's called the Johnson Viking 2. It's actually configured just like this. So we'll do another video here in the near future showing the module going into that transmitter. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again. Terry here, D-Lab.